The time has come. Intel's much anticipated eighth generation of desktop processors are here. And as you'll remember from my review of the i5-8600K yesterday, Coffee Lake has come to play. The Coffee Lake chips clobbered Kaby Lake into the ground in synthetic and real world benchmarks. They stand out as the new kings of gaming CPUs and they might have even been AMD Ryzen's downfall if they were priced a little bit lower. But with all of that going on, it's easy to forget about one major aspect of Intel's mainstream processors that has fascinated me even way back when I was doing the Will It Play series on this channel. In that series, I forewent the use of a dedicated graphics card to see whether Intel's free integrated GPUs were actually able to run modern games. Free, of course. Spoiler alert, they were. Sort of. Intel's built-in GPUs performed a lot better than I thought they would in competitive games like CSGO and League of Legends, but often unsurprisingly ran more resource-hungry games at nigh unplayable frame rates. Still, KB Lake's HD 630i GPU so spectacularly surpassed my expectations that I just had to see whether Coffee Lake's UHD 630 would return similar results. Running on MSI's new Z370 Crate Gaming motherboard, equipped with four sticks of G-Skills Triton Z RGB RAM, my Coffee Lake i5-8600K, or more specifically its iGPU, would be put to the test in games it was surely never meant to run. But it actually did just that. At 1080p resolution, the lowest possible graphics settings, DirectX 11 where possible, and RAM running at 2,667 MHz, the UHD 630 had a lot of trouble running most games, like Ghost Recon Wildlands, Deus Ex Mankind Divided, and the rest at something approaching a playable frame rate. And let's not even get into Ashes of the Singularity. Just because it's a more CPU-bound game doesn't mean that it'll run just fine without a dedicated GPU. In fact, only two of the games tested with the UHD 630 ran at or around 30 FPS. But honestly, this is exactly what I expected. An integrated GPU couldn't hope to perform on par with even the cheapest new dedicated GPUs at 1080p. Most likely, if you're relying on onboard graphics, you're just looking for something to tide you over while you save up for your graphics card, or you're planning on running your games at 720p. And in that regard, the UHD 630 isn't half bad, although the UHD would imply that it can play at 4K, but no, just 720p, let's get there. The drop in resolution has a tremendously positive effect on the iGPU's performance, as you would probably expect. Only three of the games tested, including Deus Ex Mankind Divided, Ashes of the Benchmark, I mean Ashes of the Singularity and Ghost Recon Wildlands had any trouble sticking to 30 FPS and beyond. The rest of the games ran almost perfectly, and Metro Last Light and GTA 5 even approached the 60 FPS mark. I mean, sure, there was more stuttering than I'd have liked to see, but it's still a fantastic result from a GPU that you technically didn't pay a cent for it. While putting the UHD 630 through its paces, I remembered that memory played a massive role in the performance of the HD 630 and HD 530 that I have benchmarked previously. Running dual channel memory as opposed to single channel provided the biggest upswing in performance, around a 40% upswing to be exact, but most of us know by now that dual channel configurations are superior to single channel in every possible way. So if you're thinking about running on Intel's free GPU, make sure you have two sticks of RAM and not just one to have the best possible chance of surviving here. And with that in mind, I overclocked my memory from the 266700 MHz it was running at during previous benchmarks because that's the stock memory speed of the 8600K to glorious 3200 MHz and then I tested everything again. At 1080p, with memory ramped up to 3200 MHz, the UHD 630 did indeed see an FPS improvement almost across the board, but unfortunately, it was barely enough to fall outside the margin of error. Heck, when the memory speed was clocked at 2667, the UHD 630 actually performed better in some games than it did with the 3200 MHz. But hey, maybe it's just because the benchmarks were run at 1080p. A resolution we've already established is a little too much for the iGPU to handle. Maybe there's more luck to be had at the 720p sweet spot. Yeah, no, even at 720p, the difference between running the UHD 630 with memory clocked at 2667 or 3200 was barely noticeable. The largest performance gain from running the UHD 630 with higher frequency RAM was made in Metro Last Light, which saw an improvement of about 2 to 3 FPS. And similarly to the 1080p benchmarks, the clock speed bump hindered the iGPU's performance to a very small degree in games like GTA 5. 
Clearly, there's something akin to the law of diminishing returns happening here. While the difference between 2133 and 3200 MHz RAM was very noticeable when I tested the HD630, the jump from the already super fast 2667 MHz, which is stock on the i5 Coffee Lake, to 3200 MHz paired with the UHD630, it was at the very least negligible, or at the very worst, reduced performance in certain games. Now, I've thrown almost everything I could at Coffee Lake's UHD 630i GPU to give it the best possible chance of performing well, and while it surpassed some expectations, said expectations were already fairly low. An iGPU from Intel has never and probably will never be ideal for gaming, but to be fair, it was hardly ever meant to. Intel puts their iGPUs in their processors not for gamers, but for more practical tasks like video encoding and decoding, and so you can just have a display out if you buy a super budget system. As mentioned earlier, if you're super broke, which is highly likely since you'll need a new 300 series motherboard to go along with your Coffee Lake chip, and you can't afford a dedicated GPU right now, you can technically game on the UHD 630. It won't be the prettiest or smoothest affair, but it'll get the job done. Now, just for interest's sake, let's take a look at how the UHD 630 compares to one of the most recent low budget dedicated GPUs you can get right now, Nvidia's GT 1030. Coming in at around $70, it's easily one of the cheapest ultra low end cards around that's still relevant. It's no powerhouse unlike its beefier siblings, but is it enough of an upgrade over Coffee Lake stock graphics to warrant the extra cash? Let's see. Note that all of the games tested with the GT 1030 were run at 1080p, while the scores from the UHD 630 were taken from tests run at 720p. Straight off the bat, the GT 1030 comes out swinging, scoring higher minimum and average frame rates than the UHD 630 in all of the games tested. The GT 1030's lowest improvement over the iGPU came in the form of Metro Last Light, where both GPUs scored a solid 59 FPS average. But keep in mind that the GT 1030 was running at 1080p, while the UHD 630 was running at 720p. Other than that, the GT 1030 crushed the UHD 630 into dust in all of the other benchmarks I ran, including GTA 5, where the GT 1030 was a monstrous 116% faster than the iGPU. In conclusion then, integrated graphics still kind of suck for gaming. I know, I know, what a shocking turn of events. I bet no one saw that coming. But in all seriousness, the UHD 630 performs well enough to be a nice addition to Coffee Lake chips rather than something that just takes up extra die space and offers little in return, but it's just not to be found in gaming really. It's honestly the perfect piece of tech that you need if you just want to casually jam some popular games like League of Legends, some light CSGO, CSGO fanboys best not hate on me for saying 60 FPS is playable, I've gotten enough crap for that. But some new favorites like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite are going to struggle to achieve anything that could be considered fun to play. You'll get the game up and running, but you won't be receiving any type of smooth frame rate delivery to your eyeballs. If you really want to jam out some proper games on an integrated GPU, AMD's APUs are still likely your best bet. Even their multiple years old Kaveri and Gataveri APUs, you'll get better frame rate than any of the HD or UHD series graphics that Intel has churned out recently. Back when I was still regularly testing games on both the A10-7850K and the Intel HD 530, AMD regularly outpaced Intel by roughly 40-50% to 50 depending on the games being tested. AMD slapping a low-end R7-240 equivalent into their Kaveri APUs made a world of difference. And while it didn't matter to most people because it was an odd feature to have, the ability to crossfire an APU with a dedicated GPU made them budget PC forces to be reckoned with. Obviously, they came with the typical failings of an AMD CPU, being hot and all, but they were better than Intel then, and if I still had the 7850K to test, I bet most of my YouTube cash money that they'd be better than the UHD 630 now. Which does happen to get me really excited for AMD's upcoming latest generation of APUs. Raven Ridge, as it'll be named, is supposed to take the CPU from Ryzen, yes, plus the GPUs from Vega, kinda mad but cool, and fuse them together using Infinity Fabric, creating an integrated GPU and CPU setup that we've not seen before. Infinity Fabric has been a great design by AMD for linking the CPU cores together on beats like Threadripper, so I can't wait to see what it does for gamers when it's paired with Vega. Even though ARGs Vega 56 and 64 have been kind of underwhelming and overwhelmingly power hungry and hot, hopefully AMD will be able to get something that won't run as hot as Intel CPUs with its bad thermal interface material. 
Anyways, we're supposed to expect Raven Ridge APUs anytime this quarter, so between now and the end of the year, which makes it an interesting time to be a budget gamer. You have the option of going Intel and getting one of the fastest CPUs, but then you get a mildly mediocre integrated GPU, or you can wait for Raven Ridge and get a decent CPU, plus hopefully a ball-in integrated GPU, and that given AMD's history might even support Crossfire. Interesting choices lie ahead. AMD would appear to be the better immediate solution there, but Intel gives you the benefit of having a better total system once you switch over to a dedicated GPU, really going to be up to personal choices to decide which one will be better for your given needs. Anyways, with all of that being said, if you're a gamer or a prospective gamer who received a Coffee Lake system without a graphics card as a gift, and you can afford literally any decent dedicated ultra low budget card to pair with your new chip, new or used, do it. Your FPSs will thank you for it. You'll gain massive benefits from even a used GTX 750 Ti. And with that, we just want to give a big thank you to MSI South Africa for sending over the 8600K for testing alongside the new Z370 Crate Gaming motherboard to do all of the testing on. And a similarly big thank you to Wootware for hooking us up with the GT1030 to do our comparison data with. If you're in South Africa and looking to upgrade your rig, whether it be Coffee Lake, Ryzen, or something coming up in the near future, Woodware has you covered. With a gigantic selection on some amazing products, exceptional pricing on said products, and a top of the line customer service attitude, Woodware will make your next system upgrade the smoothest experience. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to wood up your PC. The link will be in the video description. And that's going to wrap this video up here. Let me know what you guys think of Intel's UHD 630 GPU in the comments. Super disappointing, just what you needed. Can't believe they haven't caught up to AMD already. Let's talk down below or over on Twitter, I'm at UFDisciple. Be sure to hit that like button to show support for our videos. Smash it if you really wanna. Subscribe if we've earned it and you wanna stay up to date on our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UF Disciple channel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers. Running dual channel memory as opposed to single channel provided the biggest upswing in performance, around a 40... <coughs>